Welcome to the Foundation Lectures on NST. My name is Herwig Mannert. And in this sixth part, we discuss the need for and the realization of metacircular expansion or code generation. We have seen in the previous parts that we need software element structures to interconnect with the various solutions for cross-cutting concerns in software systems. And we have defined five types of elements which are closely aligned to the basic fundamental concepts of computer processors and software programming environments being data elements, task elements, flow elements, connector elements and trigger elements. We have also stated that it's obvious to use code generation techniques to create instances of these recurrent similar element structures. And because we have such simple and deterministic element structures, we refer to this process as expansion and to the code generators as expanders. Now, that means that we are also dealing with automatic code generation or automatic programming. And automatic programming is by definition, the act of automatically generating source code from a model or template is sometimes distinguished from code generation, which is then performed by a compiler. But even Dave Parnas himself has said that it's always been a euphemism for programming in a higher level language than available to the programmer. So whether it's automatic programming or code generation, it's all more or less the same thing. People also refer to it as generative or metaprogramming. And it's always about manufacturing software components in an automated way. It's basically as old as programming itself, because in any computer language, if you have an Hello World application, which is the most simple and elementary application, you immediately have a Hello World code generation application by simply automatically generating a hello world command. Now, there is a need for automatic programming, not just in the creation of the recurrent normalized systems element structures, but the goal has always been to improve programmer productivity. And if we as a software industry would be able to manufacture software components in an automated way, just like automation in the industrial revolution. This could increase programming productivity, consolidate knowledge, eliminate human errors, and it is likely to address many more issues. We know that we have a growing amount of software, that we always have had a shortage of computer programmers, that it is still the case that we have an increasing amount of bugs and defects and that we have ever rising IT development and maintenance budgets. So everyone kind of agrees there is a need for automatic programming, not just in the expansion of the normalized systems element structures. The field of automatic programming is in reality better known through a number of hypes terminologies which are used. People talk not specifically about automatic programming, but they talk about model-driven architectures, model-driven engineering, model-driven software development, or today people talk a lot about local development programs. Now, all these techniques have in common that they are in essential way automatic programming variants. They use domain models, higher level description, languages to model things and to generate code. So it is always about the use of models to structure requirements and to represent domain knowledge. Now the field is still evolving, facing challenges and criticism because many people doubt whether these automatic programming techniques are really suitable for large scale mission critical systems and that, you know, there's a lack of an intermediate representation and reuse of intermediate representations. There's a conceptual gap toward code. Maybe it's tied to a technological solution. So there are still many issues that people raise, many issues people are faced with. Nevertheless, it is an important domain. Everybody agrees we should do more automatic programming. It also is as relevant as ever 
because the issues that automatic programming were supposed to solve, to address, are as relevant as ever. We have ever more software, ever more shortage of programmers, multi-trillion lines of code, gigantic budgets, etc. However, we believe that there's a reason that actually multiple reasons, that automatic, automatic programming has not gone really mainstream, that we just cannot automatically program everything, that we still have need of so many computer programmers, that we still have so many issues, because we believe in the field of automatic programming at least three fundamental issues still need to be thoroughly addressed. There's first the regeneration issue. It's not enough to generate the code. You need to be able to add, to insert, to introduce custom code, and you need to be able to harvest that, regenerate code, and re-inject that. We think that certainly in automatic programming systems, we need meta-circularity. And I will explain this in this part. And we need programming interfaces, open, scalable programming interfaces to support scalable collaboration. Now, the first thing, the regeneration, we have argued extensively. We have said that we need recurrent structures, recurrent structures to limit the complexity, to guarantee the consistency, that we nevertheless need to be able to adapt these recurrent structures over time to overcome flaws and technological changes, and that we need custom code, that it is inevitable, and so we need to be able to harvest, re-inject custom code in updated recurring structures. So, we have argued extensively and also proposed our mechanism to have a code generation or expansion environment being able to harvest the custom code, regenerate or rejuvenate the skeleton structures or the generated code and to re-inject the custom code. The second fundamental thing we need to solve in, all, in order to bring automatic programming to full fruition is we need to make it meta-circular. Now, what does that mean? But why do we need that? Well, there's a huge power in technological artifacts which can be harnessed if you have circularity. For instance, this is a transistor. And a transistor is a switch. Now, there are many other switch. But the interesting thing about the transistor as a switch is that it's switched by another transistor. This is a cell. And an interesting thing about the cell is that it is produced by another cell. Now, this enables highly rapid evolution, of course, because you have a single point of progress. If you manage to create a better transistor, a faster transistor, a smaller transistor, in an instant, you have better, faster and smaller versions of all your circuits, because they use only transistors. The switches are switched by switches. If you have an improved cell, you have an improved cell production and you have improved cellular life forms. So basically, if you have a circular thing, a circular design, you collapse or shortcut the design cycle and you can have a positive feedback or resonance effect in a positive way. The transistor becomes better, the circuit becomes better, transistor better, circuit better. The cell becomes better, the cell produces better cells, the cell is better, etc., etc. So this is an extremely powerful thing, circularity. It shortcuts the design cycle and it creates a good positive feedback. Now, meta-circularity in software engineering is a known concept for quite a while. It is often associated with homo-iconicity. It was coined already in the 1960s, traces even back to Doug McIlroy, head of the at and Bell Labs. And we have definitions like code as data, program structure similar to its syntax, etc. But these definitions are often considered to be fake and controversial. 
concept is also often associated with LISP, and it also appears in the term metacircular evaluator, which was coined by John Reynolds in the early 70s for an interpreter where each feature of the defined language by using the corresponding feature of the defining language. So, though there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of fakeness, it's a bit controversial, there is nevertheless a widespread belief that this kind of metacircular property increases the abstraction level and therefore the productivity. And that's what it's all about, the productivity of computer programming. Now, why do we need metacircularity in metaprogramming or automatic programming? Why do we need metacircularity in our normalized systems expanders or code generators? Well, if, like I said, it is very simple to make a basic code generator. If you have an Hello World application, you can make an Hello World generator. Now, but you also have to maintain the meta code or the programming code. Now, everyone who makes basically a code generator will always have to define some kind of model, some kind of properties, some kind of parameters, the name of the entities, the attributes of the entities, and will have some code templates, code templates with a number of variables, and those variables get assigned a value based on the model parameters or the properties, and then they are instantiated into real code. Now, you always need that. But if you need that, of course, if you make the metaprogramming code, you will need some reader classes reading the various model parameters. But of course, you will also need some model classes representing the model parameters, representing the properties, representing the variables, representing the entities you want to generate code for. You will always need some classes actually instantiating the coding templates, generating the code by instantiating the coding templates, and you will have some control classes taking the models and based on these model parameters uh, selecting which generator classes you have to invoke, which templates you have to instantiate. So, it's quite a lot. You have some model classes, some templates, but you will have a whole lot of control logic in between. This consists of several modules. It's in general not trivial to write because it's quite abstract and you will also face a growing number of implementations because you will have many technologies, many variations, you will have various frameworks dealing with the cross-cutting concerns, so you will have a growing number of implementations of the coding templates and that will be reflected in more generator, control classes, model classes, different versions, multiple variants, even various technology stacks. And this code generation software will have to adapt to evolutions of its underlying technology, which may even become obsolete if the programming language or environment of frameworks is not used that much anymore. So, for us, it is very important that we would have metacircularity in code generation, that you would have metacode that does not only generate code, but regenerates itself, regenerate the code generation code and therefore itself. And that's how we define metacircularity in code generation, metacode that regenerates itself. And if we are writing code generators, it would be very, very extremely useful and powerful to have metacircular code generators regenerating itself and closing the meta circle. Okay, so in a normalized systems expansion or code generation framework, how did we close the meta circle? Well, in phase one, we had code generators like everyone has code generators and like I have explained, you have some model parameters, properties, variables, which you can store in files, for instance. You have some reader classes, model classes, and then coding templates, which are 
driven or evoked by expander or generator classes and controlled by control classes, selecting based on the various model parameters which generator classes need to be invoked. Now, with these code generators, we expand or generate multi-tier web application programs, database applications where the applications read and write from and to databases, represent the model, have some logic in the logic tier, some control in the presentation layer and some viewing functionality in the view layer. Now, in a second phase, you can look at it and say, look, we can generate these kind of multi-tier applications based on the models, but under every model is a meta model, a model of the model. And basically, you can extract the meta model or make it explicit. And usually it's not that complex, certainly not if you have simple models. In our models, we have data entities for data elements, task entities for task elements, etc. Now, but basically, usually in every model, all these parameters properties, in fact, they are just data entities. Representing a data entity requires you to have a name of that entity and various names of the attributes. But this is a data entity itself. Representing a task entity requires you to have a name of the task entity and some properties or qualifiers, which is then a data entity itself. So the meta model can easily be expressed in our model, it's even a simplified subpart or subspace of our model because we can express the meta model as a set of data entities. But so if we can express our meta model as any other model in our normalized systems models, we can also use that meta model as an input to the reader model, control, expander classes, code generators and templates and expand a meta application where we can store and read and write in a database the meta models, look at them, perform logic on it, view them, etc. So you can have a meta application which we call the prime radiant to manage and manipulate, read, write the models. Now, from this meta application, which knows the models of all the applications, we can, of course, drive the control classes because the models are in the database of this meta application, call the control classes, driving the actual generator classes and the templates and generate the code. So in this second phase, we have some kind of meta-circularity because we have a generated application handling, manipulating the various models and driving the code generations. Of course, we introduce a new component, a kind of a piece of hinge software to convert the internal representation of the generated meta application to the control classes of the original code generators. But at that point, we can go one step further, which we actually did. Now, you see, you can just store the models in the database or files around the meta application, and you can write, read, manipulate the models and the meta models in your generated meta application. Now, because in that meta application, classes have been generated to read and write files and databases, you actually don't need those original reader classes of your code generators anymore. They just are absorbed or merged into the generated reader and writer classes reading to, uh, from, or writing to databases or files. You don't need the original model classes representing the model anymore, because they can be merged with the generated model classes of the meta application. So, 
It highly simplifies things because you don't need to evolve and maintain the reader and writer classes anymore or the model classes. And that simplification can be taken a step further. Even the control classes you don't need anymore and the expander classes and the software hinge because we went over to a declarative way of defining the various code generators of expanders and the various applicability conditions and tying them to the various coding templates. So now you can, from the generated meta application, simply start the expansion of both regular applications and the meta application without the software hinge conversions, without the original reader and writer classes without the model classes and control classes. And so the entire code base of the code generators collapses because you see on the left hand side the meta application which is completely generated, can be regenerated and rejuvenated. And you have coding templates and declarations of expanders that you have to maintain. And so the circle gets is closed, becomes closed and enables rapid revolution because it's an expander meta circle. You can improve the templates, add new declarations of expanders or code generators, improve the meta application. The meta application will allow you to have a more powerful meta application and control the expansion process. So it's very important and productive to close this expander meta circle. And there's also a collapse in the code generation software you have to maintain and evolve. Now, how does this code generation actually happens in this declarative setting? Well, basically you have the model consisting of descriptions of the elements, a certain data entity with a name and some attributes, a certain task entity with a name and some attributes or properties. You have some context of technology settings, your use cross-cutting concerns frameworks. Then you have the set of template classes belonging to a specific type of element like a data element. And then if you combine the technology settings, the cross-cutting concern settings, with the parameter and properties of the various functional entities, you get an instantiated element with a number of actual coding classes. Now, how does it look like for an individual class? So an individual template consists of code snippets, various parts of code, conditional, not conditional. And so these pieces of code with possible variations are steered, controlled by the model parameters. And the model parameters and the technology settings, they are connected to the various parameters controlling the instantiation of an individual template class leading to an individual source artifact or software class. Now, how does it look like? Well, we have the declarative definition of a artifact expander corresponding to a certain expansion of a specific coding template. And you see the artifact expander defining the actual artifact that is being expanded. It belongs to the task element in this case. The name is a task interface expander, so it will create or expand a task interface class. And it is always applicable because it's always used. So you have the declarative definition of an expander, an expansion of a single source template. You have the definition of an instance of an element, for instance, a task entity, which is called a prime radiant updater, which has a certain package name, a number of attributes or properties. And so you have the definition 
of a functional entity and you combine it with the definition of every artifact expander or source template that is part of the element templates and you do that using a declarative mapping where you retrieve using expressions or GNL expressions but nested expressions all the various parameters of the model and of your functional entities and of your technological environment and define variables that you can use in the actual source template to instantiate certain statements or lines of code or shape or adapt certain statements or lines of code. Now, so we have said that metacircular expansion is very important in automatic programming because it can increase the productivity, it can remove the burden of maintaining and evolving the code generation software. What is also important is that you need interfaces at the level of metaprogramming or automatic programming to enable scalable collaboration. We have interfaces for software to allow or enable scalable collaboration for normal software, but we also need it for meta software, meta programming, so that you can have scalable collaboration within companies, across companies, in open source communities, wherever. And that scalable collaboration is needed in software for rich application, offering convenient hardware support, but it is still a subject of research in 2019. You see still a lot of papers about it. Now, automatic programming always performs a transformation from domain description language, from intermediate models to code generators and programming code. And we basically need open scalable interfaces at both ends to add or extend domain models on the one hand and to add or replace code generators on the other hand. And the proposed metacircular structure not only removes the burden of maintaining and evolving the code generation software, it also highly simplifies the definition of the interfaces because it allows you to separate the both ends, to separate the definition of the interface for the models at the one hand and for the actual code generators or templates on the other hand. Now, looking at this, picture again with the expander meta circle, you see that on the one hand you are able to define additional expanders, additional or modified or improved coding templates, to define, identify additional improved coding templates, and on the other hand to define additional parameters, properties, attributes of the meta model or even entities of the meta model and for these entities define then once again specific templates or expanders. So you not only remove the burden of maintaining all this code generation software, you also decouple both sides of the metaprogramming interfaces, the side of the models, parameters, properties on the one hand and the side of the actual coding templates on the other hand, and allowing people to define additional metaparameters properties and to use them to shape the templates on the other side without having to bother to pass them through the entire control structure because the control structure is not there anymore. It has not only evaporated, removing the need to maintain and evolve it, it has also evaporated and is allowing or enable people to define additional meta parameters and to use them in the coding templates. So you can extend or add additional parameters or properties to your models. You can have additional or improved versions 
of your coding templates, tie them to the additional, connect them to the additional defined parameters and generate improved or extended source artifacts. Now, circularity is a very powerful thing and you ch it shortcuts the design cycle and you don't only have the expander meta circle, the meta circle connecting the expanders and the meta application, improving the expanders, having a better meta application, being able to improve the expanders once more. It also shortcuts a second circle because if application programmers write custom code, they often see that custom code they are writing is quite repetitive in nature and is suited to include, to generalize it into expanders, into coding templates. They will often see that they're writing custom code in a repetitive way doing three, four, five, six times the same thing with small variations and at that point this kind of custom code matures and this kind of custom code becomes eligible to be included in the code generators, expanders or in the coding templates. So part of the custom code can be generalized to templates, can be become available afterwards in the code generators and removing the need for some of this custom code, having more efficient ways of doing it, having less custom code to maintain. So you have a second meta circle, which is quite powerful by people looking at their custom code, looking at repetitive implementation with slight variations, generalizing them and introducing features in the expanders or code generators. And that's why we believe that we're now far enough to have an open, scalable interface for meta programming. And we believe that we have an open, scalable interface for meta programming. And at our Stars End website, we make available various expander bundles, bundles of code generators of normalized systems expanders, and people can contribute and introduce new expander bundles through these open collaboration interfaces for metaprogramming. And the whole point is that metacircularity is an incredible powerful thing. It can shortcut the design cycle. It can bring positive feedback, even dynamic and instabilities in the way we want it or resonance. Because people making custom code can generalize this to meta code or automatic programming code and everybody else can enjoy it. And every contributor can do that and every contributor can enjoy the contributions of everyone else. Everyone else who has done something in a repetitive way with numerous slight variations and who is able to generalize it can turn it into a piece of code generator and all the other ones can enjoy it. And that can be done for various languages, Java, JavaScript, Python, ETL, whatever. Because in the declarative definition of the code generators, you don't have to maintain them in a specific language anymore. Only the templates are aware of a programming language, not the environment around it. So you can work together even with various programming languages and various scripting language because the control structure of the code generators has disappeared, has evaporated. And so it is our dream and we believe it is coming nearer and nearer to turn every programmer into a meta programmer. Every programmer who is now daily doing repetitive things, slight variations of the same, enabling him, empowering him or her, to generalize these pieces of code into coding templates, defining them in a declarative way as expanders or code generators, and therefore create a metacircular instability or resonance effect. 
Now, of course, if you have any remarks or questions, you are very welcome to send them. I thank you.